Welcome to the Growing in Grace podcast, where you can listen in on some casual conversation about the good news of Jesus without all of the inconsistent religious double talk. If you've ever struggled with feelings of hopelessness, guilt, and despair, or wondered if you're really right with God, it's time to discover the true freedom that comes with the gospel of unlimited and overflowing grace. It happened again. We're doing another podcast. It's called Growing in Grace. We are happy that you found us, that you're with us, hanging out with us, getting to know more about the God who lives within us. Hey, I'm Mike Kapler, but I'm not alone. The man, the legend, the myth. (laughs) I met this guy years ago, and at that time, he had been working the past three years as a mannequin at Kmart. Yeah, it was a Welcome tough job. Welcome Joel Brzezicki to the podcast. <laughs> it was just very hard to do. I was just like, I just stand there uh, saying nothing. I can picture you doing it. That's the sad part. Yeah, it was tough, but... You, um, you probably don't remember, Joel, the Andy Griffith show <laughs> uh, in the old black and white days. Uh, Barney Fife was trying to catch a, 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 a thief <laughs> uh-huh. in, in the department store. And so he went behind Andy's back, and he he dressed up kind of like a mannequin. <laughs> <laughs> he was dressed up in some sort of fishing outfit or something. I can't remember, but uh, I could see you doing that. Well, you'll see that in all kinds of shows where uh, you know, people are running from another group of people or whatever, and then all of a sudden, this you know the camera pans by, and it's like they're standing still, like mannequins or whatever. <laughs> whether they're being chased by police or chased by bad, uh, whether it's good guys being chased by bad guys or whatever. And it's like, and they're looking, and they don't they don't realize that that's an actual real person there, and it's just kind of <laughs> cheesy sometimes. Not, but <laughs> not until they have to sneeze anyway. <laughs> yeah, right. Then they got sneeze or cough, and gives their game away, and then the action continues. And it's uh, <laughs> if I were in the movies, you know, if I were making movies, man, I would use that one a lot. No, because of lack of creativity on my part. <laughs> <laughs> but it never gets old. Never gets old. Yeah, but standing there for three years as a mannequin would have gotten old if that was really real. Well, I mean, you worked eight-hour days. You but, know, it's not like you were there for three years straight. It's actually, but speaking of how long we've known each other, it's almost been, next year it'll be 30 years. Since we met? Since we met, yeah. Yeah. Since I entered the foray of Christian radio where you were um, already there and took me in and taught me everything you know. And it still didn't work very well. <laughs> <laughs> it was a few months before that that I came face to face with the the gospel of grace, mm-hmm. and then shortly after that, you and I met, and I couldn't keep my mouth shut about it. And yeah, you're probably still mad at me. Oh, that was a it was a good thing. That, we wouldn't be here today <laughs> if we were joking around. I would say, yeah, why, why? Well, come on, man, shut up. But no, it was. That was really good. It was a really good time in my life of learning. Is, is, and, is, and I've explained it before, I think, that it was stuff that the things that you were saying were resonating with me because it was stuff that I knew internally, but I just wasn't being taught. I was being taught the opposite. So it's like the Holy Spirit was inside me teaching teaching things. Uh, and And over the course of my life up to that point, which had been brief at that time. I was just in my early 20s, I suppose, mid-20s. But the things that you were saying were like, yes, yes, this is it. This is, that's right. That's, and it w- w- just went so against everything that I was being taught in church. So it was, it was a good, it was a really good time. And I cannot look at that time and, and think that the Lord didn't put all that together. I just, I just know that he did. He put all that together. And, um, and then now 30 years later, almost, uh, we've been doing this podcast together, talking about these things for um, almost 19 years. Yeah, it's been good what the Lord has done <laughs> with all of this and helping us to grow in the grace and the knowledge of the Lord Jesus. You know, um, it, that that event that you were just talking about, us coming together, we, we kind of recognize that. We understand that as something God orchestrated. But I wonder how many things in our lives throughout the day, the week, the month, the year, uh, I wonder how many things are being orchestrated by God in our lives that we may or may not always recognize as that. Yeah. Well, I think about that a lot, and I know we have other things to talk about, but this is uh, this is interesting, I because I think about the last um, five years of my life, I had been 
basically on a certain kind of path in life with a certain job. I won't get into all that, but then all of a sudden, I was kind of taken out from underneath my feet, uh, not by my own doing, but my job was outsourced to a different company. And so for the last five years, you know, I had no real educational training to fall back on. I had nothing. And so I've had to kind of figure out what to do. And I've done a lot of praying. I've done a lot of just seeking the Lord. And there's been a lot of uncertainty and a lot of, I don't know, I don't get this. But yet at the same time, there's that faith. There, There's that understanding that I can look back on these times, like when I met you. I can look back on times when a certain thing happened that I couldn't have orchestrated by myself. Even just that whole thing about getting into radio, I've shared that because I'm an introvert. I don't like being in the spotlight. Up to that time, I had never ever imagined myself being in front of a microphone or anything like that. And the Lord put me into that situation and things happened from that. So in my circumstances during the last five years, I've been able to just realize, even though I can't see what what God is doing, what he is orchestrating, even though I can't see it, I know that he is at work. I, I know that things don't make sense sometimes, but he's doing what he's doing, whether you call it behind the scenes or you know, just things that I can't see. Um, maybe he's preparing other people. Maybe he's preparing me to work with other people. Who knows? I don't know. But uh, I guess the point would be that the Lord is faithful and he's good. And when you can't see what he's doing, d- that does not mean that he's not doing anything. That doesn't mean that he's absent or or um, not participating in your life. Because as believers, we've become one spirit with him. And he began a good work in us, and he is faithful to bring that work to completion. There, you know, so we don't even have to. There, that's something we don't have to worry about. I know we do worry because we don't see, but um, uh, we don't see everything. We don't understand it all. But by faith, and just trusting him, just a simple trust, we we know that he is faithful, and that uh, even though we can't see what he's doing, he is at work. It's encouraging to that, me to think that way. Yeah, that that's a good place to be just being at peace with that. Um, you know, I, I, I'm not one who subscribes to the idea that everything that happens is the will of God. Right. Um, but a lot of times God is there orchestrating things in your life. And even when, you know, I think sometimes we're just always asking God, which direction should I go? And I think there's a place for that. And, and he may point you in, in a, a certain direction, but I, I know there's a lot of people out there who just don't know what to do or where to go or what God's plan is for their life. And I think sometimes God just said, look, I'm, I'm giving you the freedom to make some choices. Mm-hmm. You do what you want to do. I'll be with you every step of the way. All right. Yeah. And whatever choice you make, he's there. He's going to be there. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. And I've done a lot of that too. A lot of that has been, you know, it's uh, been kind of a mixture for me because I know again, looking back, that there are choices that I never could have made by myself. I say, hmm, I wanted, I, I want to do this, and so I'm going to pursue that. It wasn't that kind of thing, but the Lord did it, and I know it was just him. And then there's other things where I recognize that it was a choice that I made, and um, it just led to where whatever it did. So anyway, I don't know. You know, this is just kind of spontaneous right here. It's not really like I said what we had planned on talking about here, but hopefully it's encouraging to people to know that God is at work in you and he's with you. He never leaves you and he's never forsaken you, even if it might seem like that. But if you have some things that you think about doing, somebody asked me recently, maybe we'll save, I don't know, maybe we'll save what we were going to talk about for next week. But somebody had sent an email to me and I haven't responded to it. It was quite some time ago. Um, wondering if he is supposed to be married. I just wonder, mm. I just don't know if I'm supposed to be married or not. I, w- I feel like I want to be. And so, uh, but, but there were a whole bunch of other things that he asked in this email. And I'm just, I was just kind of overwhelmed with everything in it. And, um, my thought on that is that, well, if you want to be married, then find a wife, you know, uh, then pursue that. It's, it's not like the Lord is saying, well, you can't be married. Uh, you have a desire to be married, but sorry, um, <laughs> uh, you can't be. And I'm not saying it's just all black and white, that all of a sudden just everything will just fall into place. But I'm like going along with what you're saying is that 
It's not necessarily a, a life of, well, I've got to find exactly specifically what the Lord wants me to do. And that, like you say, that he's got a specific will for me that I need to find. It's generally not like that, I don't think. It's generally the type of thing where you're given a life, you have the Holy Spirit in you, but it's you and the Holy Spirit. It's you and Jesus. It's not just Jesus dictating what you are supposed to do with your life. You get to make decisions, you get to walk with him, and it's it's a relationship in which you're joined together with Jesus. Yeah, you know, uh, and that that's a big one for especially for for younger people trying to just make a big decision like that about marriage. Um, I remember back in the day before I was married, I, I had somebody I, I respected at that time who sat down with me. And we talked about a number of things, and I was trying to figure some of that stuff out myself. Where where was I going to go in my life with with you know marriage and and those kinds of things and he he made a statement because you know there are some people who think just on this topic uh, some people think that there is one person that God has for you and uh, that that's not to say that those who have uh, had a spouse pass or they've gotten a divorce or something like that that you couldn't get married again but some people just think that you know God has one person in mind for you well. I'm with you a little bit on this, even on this topic, Joel, that people can make their own decisions. Now, God will work with you on that, I'm sure. He'll, he'll reveal things to your heart. You'll you'll just know. But sometimes you, you feel like, well, I just, I'm not sure. I don't know. But one thing this guy told me um, back at that time was he said, you know, he said, I, I think I could have been happily married to any number of different women, <laughs> but I chose this one and she chose me. Um, exactly. and so he was basically trying to encourage me that you, you are free to make choices and, and God will be with you as, as you make those decisions. Um, uh, we don't always make the right ones in life. Uh, hopefully we can learn from some of those. That doesn't mean that God gets mad at you or, you know, starts throwing things at you from across the room. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's what the spouse does. Then that's not God. <laughs> I'm joking. I'm joking. It's probably not funny. Um, and but he's he's there with you every step of the way through the right decisions, through the wrong decisions. Sometimes there was no right or wrong. You just made a decision. And sometimes you don't know if it was right or wrong. Uh, there are. I'm certainly certainly there were times in my life, Joel, where I, I sort of felt like I should do something. I didn't do it, and I regretted it later. Other times, uh, things worked out better when I had to make an important decision, and you just sort of sensed that God was sort of behind that one. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you made the right decision, and uh, and it sort of felt like uh, God God must have been steering me a little bit on that one, or or certain circumstances happen in life that you know just kind of opened up for you. Um, was it just by chance? Man, not necessarily. God may have been very involved with that. All right. And even, you know, next week, so, and not that we're going to end at this moment here, but next week, you know, Jesus had given some specific directions to some people, you know, after he had died and risen again. And we're going to get into something next week where they didn't even necessarily follow that right away. And so they made a decision, whether it's based on fear or ignorance or whatever, and stuff happened from that. And some problems arose from it, and some good things arose from it. So we'll talk more about that next week, but just the same thing in our lives here. It's like there's not like a, uh, uh, a just a perfect path that you're supposed to follow, and if I would just stay on that path, everything would just be okay. That's not true. I mean, you can make... Like you said, we make good decisions, we make bad decisions, and sometimes, like you say, it's neither one or the other. It's just a decision we make. We're gonna. I remember a friend, and I think I've shared this, but he would pray before deciding which restaurant to eat at. And I'm like, that's to me, that's just silly. Or um, our long time ago pastor um, said that they would. Um, I don't know if it was him or somebody else that they were going to buy some furniture. And they were at a furniture store, and they went. Um, they asked if they could just go into a room and just and just pray about buying a table or something like that. <laughs> I'm like, you know, sometimes you just I want this chair or I don't want this chair. 
Uh, but some people are so obsessed <laughs> with, I've got to do exactly what God wants me to do, and you get and you get paralyzed, and you end up not doing anything, or you or you try to do too much, and that's no life. That's not the life that God has for us. So what I just encourage people in other to words, do what you're trying to say relax. is some people are just a little off their rocker, <laughs> but, <laughs> and they just need a couch to sit <laughs> down on and relax on. Uh, re- relax. I mean, that's the thing. One of the things we've entered God's rest. You know, we have rendered entered into God's rest, and you can rest and relax. And that doesn't mean you never do anything. It just means that you don't have to worry about all these things. If you're doing what you're supposed to be doing or not what doing what you're not supposed to be doing, just like we were talking about previously on a previous podcast, it's it's about him. It's not about rules, procedures, how tos. Just relax and put your trust in him and live your life. Just live your daily life. Well, this was uh, an unexpected podcast, what we ended up talking about here. Um, As Joel kind of hinted, maybe we can give it a little more tease here on what we're going to be talking about. And I don't know, maybe we'll be on it for a few programs. It's it's some really interesting stuff, I think, that I don't hear much about. And so I think we'll be maybe doing a little bit of digging, bringing up some perspectives for people to think about and consider when it comes to um, what what we've got coming up. And I guess the tease on this, Joel, might be uh, in the book of Acts, after Jesus rose from the dead and then was taken to heaven some days after that, and the Spirit came and, and fell on the believers at that time, the, the Jewish believers who had been with Jesus uh, and whoever was gathered with them. From that time, for years later, there was really no mention of non-Jewish people getting saved or receiving the Spirit for quite a few years after that. Mm -hmm. And then we're going to jump to, we'll talk about that, and then we're going to jump to where it began to happen in in the pages of, of the Bible. But there's just some really fascinating stuff to dig up from that which I think ultimately, by the time we're done, is is going to help people understand not only the gospel a little bit more, but the challenges and difficulties that were going on back at that time that caused some of the divisions and, and how all that came to be. So I'm looking forward to talking about that. This has been Growing in Grace with Mike Kapler and Joel Brzezinski, heard online through various internet sources around the world each week. Access past programs by visiting growingingrace.org. Share it with a friend and listen again next week for more Growing in Grace.